Hey, thanks for being here. You can find more conversations just like this one on arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E dot net. Okay, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 533 is with Chef Andy Murray, creator of Eat, Drink, and Be Murray. How do you feel when you when you bring together the celebration of, of, of family and friends and things like that? And, and your imagination is the one that put that cuisine together. Uh, I could start with what's the occasion who do I want to invite what will they eat and and does it matter what they think <laughs> <So>. <laughs> the book eat drink and be Murray this is coming out at the perfect time because it is that season we're going right into the, tr- the tradition of the holidays right now and this book opens up the imagination it's a it's 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 a it's a wonderful book it's a simple book that's the one thing people should should take away from it that this book shows people they can make a really nice meal and it it's not brain surgery what let's talk i'm here in the south and here in the south we love our fried chicken lucille's fried chicken how would you prepare it in the way that I, i i would make the attempt but i'm sure it wouldn't taste as great as yours chef well, my mom's my mom's she she used less, seemed to use less oil than a lot of people I've, oh. I've chicken with. Uh, you know, she only had you know a quarter inch of oil on the bottom of the pan. Where I know other people and they, and, you know, you get one of those big skillets and you know, they put half half of it is oil. Yeah, which is not a bad thing either. You know, and then then there's people who drop it in the basket. But uh, my mom, my mom's w- was made with love, and that's that's the one thing that came through with all that chicken. I mean, she made that one night for dinner, and uh, my brother Brian brought John Belushi to dinner. <laughs> they come; they were in Second City at the time, and John must have eaten three chickens that night. You know, John wasn't a big drinker, but he ate a lot of food. Yeah. He loved yeah. to eat. Uh, that and dessert were his two big things, man. And uh, but yeah, it's the, our, my fried chicken. My actually, it's my mom's fried chicken. It's pretty darn good. Chicken is is, is my go to because it seems to be the, the comfort food and things like that. And and that and that's one of the things that during the lockdown that I, I prepared a lot of in the kitchen. I I wasn't anywhere near even thinking about being becoming a chef until the lockdown. And then when I went in there, oh my god, dude! I I just I can't imagine what you go through, chef. It's you know it's. It's all about preparation, most yep, of it, and, yep. and then it's just you get it all ready, and then you get it, and when it's done, you're you're so happy with yourself. But yeah, the chicken thing, everybody's eating chicken. It's crazy in New York. It's it's it seems like everybody orders chicken. I got a chicken hash recipe in this book that's wonderful. That and then you pair that with a, the bloody bowl that's in the cocktail section, and that'll cure any hangover you got. <laughs> You also have the chicken vegetable soup as well. But see, I like my soup scalding hot because it slows me down. How do you prepare your soup? Uh, it's a lot of vegetables. I saute a lot nice. of vegetables before the stock ever gets in. Uh, I've been known to, you know, bring chicken soup over to sick girlfriends' houses. It, it scores points, so let me tell you on that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, when, but when, when you when you prepare food like that what what is it like to relinquish it in the in the way that because i mean i i, I write books I, I do radio when i relinquish the energy it's it's like you don't you don't stand there wanting things to come back but what do you do knowing that your art is now going to be gone in a, in a matter of moments it's you know it's kind of stressful sometimes in the beginning because yeah. i i make a big deal and i have a dinner party or some people come over i can't I can't eat my own food until everybody sat down and has started eating it and it's almost done. And then I have calmed down enough because of my energy level was just, you know, skyrocketing, just to get all this food and get it done right. That, uh, then I sit down and when it's all done and that's when I get hungry, it's actually about two <laughs> hours after everybody leaves. <laughs> you grilled pimento cheese sandwiches. I mean, we I thought pimento cheese was was pretty much a southern thing, but this obviously this book is really is proving that no, I'm wrong. Well, to tell you the truth, this pimento cheese recipe, grilled cheese recipe comes from my friend uh, Martha Walters who's from Charleston. Yes. <laughs> And uh, and she is very particular about her her pimento and cheese, and very particular about the bread. She wants you to use sourdough bread on it mm-hmm. uh, when her, you make that grilled cheese sandwich. And she's absolutely right. What what do you think of Charleston? I mean, that's my favorite place on the planet. Do you ever just get out there and play around? 
I go to Charleston about four times a year. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, I love Charleston. I really do. And uh, I got I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Sean Brock, who was running the Husk restaurants then. And uh, he since sold those and moved to Nashville, and he's opened four more in Nashville. And not Husk restaurants, but different restaurants. There's some great, great chefs and, and uh, food that's available in, in Charleston. One of my favorite towns in the world. Yeah, because it, it, you get down there around Meeting Street or even Main Street. King's Drive has all those beautiful restaurants and stuff. But I've always wanted a fancy restaurant out there on Folly Beach so I could just look at that lighthouse. Oh, the Folly Beach is wonderful. We one year, uh, we my family we rented three houses. It was about a mile apart, you know, uh, the three houses. So the kids would start boogie boarding at one <laughs> house, and and the waves would take you down to the third house, and they just went back and forth. And then and you'd have lunch and uh, dinner at the middle house. Uh, it worked because we had you know, we had about thirty five people with us, so yeah, it worked out real well. <laughs> what what led you to be becoming that chef? I mean, th- that to me is your stage. But is what what's your other art forms? Uh, singing. Yes. Yeah. No. I was uh, I was when I was a kid. I was in the boys' choir. I went to Europe. I sang for the Pope. Uh, when I was in high school, I was in boys ensemble. And then when I got older, I was, I remember being in this bar with these guys and I was telling them, yeah, I, yeah, I used to sing and, uh, told them about singing for the Pope. And they said, oh, why don't we have some? And I had this, this is a bar that had a lot of musicians hanging out with Steve Holly, who was a drummer for, for Wings and, and, uh, Brian Stanley, who was uh, Tommy Shaw's, uh, bass player, uh, Jimmy Vivino, who's, uh, Conan O'Brien's music director. And so we had this like Holiday Inn band. We only played on holidays. The Andy Murray band. We only, you know, be there or be square kind of thing. And it was crazy. You know, you'd sit up there and and I could sing. And you have these people screaming for you. And then the next day you're in front of a stove sweating. And you go, well, wait a minute, what's wrong? <laughs> Something wrong with this picture. <laughs> Do you, you plan on recording anything anytime soon? Uh no, my voice has changed a little bit. It's still pretty good, but uh, you know, it's a it's a younger man's game. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations on this book, Eat, Drink, and Be Murray. I mean, it really is a fan. And, and like you said, it is easy. What I love about it is is that it's it you know take it to the store with you or take it to the farmers market so that you can really buy the right ingredients. Well, do that. Read the stories. It's a it's a it's. I was told by one lady, it's like a big warm hug. Yep. Uh, it's a wonderful Christmas present. It's 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 a memoir and recipes. It's not just recipes. Mm-hmm. So it, there's some fun stories in there. Well, and the pictures too. Kudos on the pictures. Oh, there's some family pictures people have never seen. There's some pictures I've never saw. I, that there's a picture of my parents when they were like 20 years old at the Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. And it's a great picture. Wow. Wow. Well, I, I look forward to talking to you more and more in the future, Chef. Anytime. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you, Arrow. I appreciate it so much. Listen, you have a great holiday season. Same to you, sir. Be brilliant today. All right. Thank you so much.